Hello again, fellow YouTubers and Bond fans. Salmon Pleasant back for another James Bond movie review. Pretty quick since my last one cut, but you know what? I feel like doing it. So, let's get started. Now, last time we reviewed Goldfinger, one of my, one of the best Bond films, and right after that comes Thunderball. <laughs> oh, um... As you can tell from my expression, this one had some disadvantages. So, let's not waste any time and dive right into Thunderball. So, as usual, we start with the story and plot. So, basically, the story is kind of hard to follow, and... It, it's just a little bit hard to follow, but after watching it a couple of times, I figured out that the plot is basically this. Spectre is back, after its little break, I guess, in Goldfinger. Um, they're coming back and they hijack a... Well, they send a plane into the ocean, somewhere off the Cuban coast, I think. And basically they take n two nuclear bombs from the plane, and they now are holding these bombs, and they're saying, okay, we're holding Britain and America ransom. Pay us money or we nuke you. That seems pretty simple. There are a couple problems I have with this story, though. One, the plane that they use is supposed to be a test plane. Why would a test plane have two nuclear devices on it? That makes absolutely no sense. That, that's one of my biggest gripes. Um, we'll get into characters later, but for the most part, the story is just kind of average. I mean, this is pretty early to come in with nukes. I mean, first plot, we've got a radio beam. Second, do actual spy stuff. Third, nuke Fort Knox. Okay, that's using a nuke, but it's against Fort Knox. That's actually original. This is just, okay, we have two nuclear missiles and we're going to blow you up. It's pretty cut and dry. Now, granted, they would have to start sooner or later with using that kind of story arc, but it's just so such a cut and dry story. I mean... The name Thunderball is only used even once, so... And that's even for just a code name for a mission, and it's like, what? You name this film Thunderball, yet Thunderball has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on. At least call what you're... at least call the missiles Thunderball or something, I don't know, I mean... It's just kind of weak for a story, especially for a Bond story. It's not one of the weakest, but it's definitely there. So for that reason, I give it a half a star, because it just didn't hold up. Alright, so now we move on to scenery. Again, the scenery is kind of cut and dry, and here's one of the main problems. Those freaking underwater scenes. Those are boring. I'm going to be one to admit that. Like, most people think that they're fine. I know at least one person who doesn't like Thunderball, but... The, and I will agree with him with the fact that, yes, the underwater scenes are boring. They are really boring. And they're very slow. I mean, the action is just like, okay, come on. This would be so much better on dry land. It's just everything's underwater, and it's like, ugh. It's just kind of boring. And the scenes that they show on land are actually okay. The casino that Largo's at is fine. Um... The dance is fine, the hotel's fine, I guess. It's, most of it's average when it comes to the on-land stuff, and the underwater stuff is boring, so... Yeah, there wasn't a e lot of effort necessarily put into scenery, I guess. So for that reason, I give that a star, too, because, again, it's boring. Next, we move on to follow-up. Okay, um, judging how this review's been going so far, what do you think follow-up is going to be? Especially since you're following up Goldfinger, a masterpiece film. you got to give it your all if you want to follow it up, if not be better than it, and Thunderball just doesn't. It doesn't follow up Goldfinger at all. I mean, sometimes half the, some of the times when I'm watching Thunderball, I'm like, could I just watch Goldfinger again? It's just kind of sad, almost. This isn't... And this is not my least favorite Bond film. I at least watch Thunderball and at least enjoy it. But as a follow-up, it's just... It doesn't come anywhere near Goldfinger. So for that reason, I give it a half a star. <laughs> now 
Next, the theme music. The one thing about this film that is great. The theme music for Thunderball is awesome. The theme song Thunderball is one of my personal favorites. It's just an awesome song. And this is the only probably positive thing out of the whole review, I guess, is the song. And I've actually noticed this with a couple of my a couple Bond films. Bond films that I tend to not like, the one thing I like about Bond films that I don't like up more than others is the theme song. And this is one of, the, one of those cases. Thunderball is a really good song. I mean, it's this guy saying, he's talking about this really, somebody who sounds like Chuck Norris crossed with James Bond or something. Maybe he's singing about James Bond. I don't know because Thunderball isn't a real person, but they're talk, sound about, talking about it's like some guy who sounds like a boss, basically. Maybe it's me. No. No. Don't get your hopes up. Um, but the song is really good. And every time I listen to it, I'm just like, yeah, this is awesome. So, for the theme song, or theme music, whatever you want to say, I give that a star because it's, it's a really good song. Thunderball is an amazing song. Finally, we got characters. Okay, James Bond is Bond. Blah. What did I just say there? Sean Connery is Bond. Good. Um, Bond Girl. What can you really say? I mean, there's some character development there. I mean, the main... There's one Bond girl that dies. The other Bond girl is technically... Re, technically dating or married to Largo, so... There is some connection there with the Bond girl. The Bond girl is actually an okay Bond girl. Not one of the more memorable ones. Domino is not one of the more memorable ones, but... I mean, she's okay. She's the one who offs off the baddie. Um... Grant, not a very creative way of offing him off, but regardless, she's an okay Bond girl. Um, we've got Fiona as a, uh, yeah, what, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Q Branch, M, those people are barely in this film as far as I remember. They don't do that much, so you can't drop the ball on that, guys. That's for the villains. ML Largo is an okay villain. He's... Kind of like Rosa Klebb. He doesn't have much of a personality, but he at least has some good dialogue. I mean, when he's, like, just talking to Bond idly when he's in the casino, and also when he's using trap shots and whatnot, that's okay. He's the, a villain with an eye patch. Okay, at least you're giving us some distinct thing there. It gives us something to remember him by. Working for Spectre, obviously. Um, Largo is just an okay villain. He's just average. The Henchman. Um... Fiona Volpel, I think? I don't remember, but she was okay, but she didn't do that much. She tried to kill Bond, which that is something, but she just dies off where it's like, oh, hey, guy's about to shoot me. Yoink! <laughs> Dead. Um, it, it, She just dies off pretty quick. Speaking of dying off quick, the other henchman, Vargas, I think it is, he has one of the biggest forget you... Bond henchman deaths. I mean, part of it is pretty awesome in a way, but then you're just like, okay, wait a second, that's not really subtle. I mean, he's sneaking up on Bond, who is making out with Domino or doing something with Domino, and Domino notices he's there. And James Bond's like, okay, I got this, I got this, takes a harpoon and just shoots him. And it's like, well, that was pretty nonchalant. You couldn't fight him. He just shot with a harpoon. It's like Sean Connery literally got bored with the film and he's just like, okay, I'm not gonna spend much time with that guy. Is he dead? Yeah, yeah. harpoon to a tree? Yeah, that works. I mean, you could have at least had a fight scene before you shot him. I mean, he just gets a really nonchalant send off. He's like Cronston almost. He barely does anything and then he just gets... No, he's not like Cronston. Cronston at least had an excuse for getting an nonchalant killing. He was barely in the film. Vargas was in most of the film, and he just gets a nonchalant kill. It's just... Just not that fair, I don't think. And the climax on the boat is very anticlimactic. I mean, Bond is about to fight with Largo, and... Oh, harpoon in the back. It's just kind of a... Nonchalant death. Most of the villains die pretty nonchalantly. Granted, I remember all of them, but most of them all get... Most of them get shot by a harpoon, via harpoon or handgun, but most of them just get shot. It's just not that, not that in enthusiastic. And Connery half the time looks bored, I think, and 
no shock, I mean, it's no surprise, but well, what can I say with Connery's the only real good actor, I think the Bond girl is okay, but the villains and everything else is just kind of so low, low and below par, I mean, you can't do anything but give it a half a star. I give characters half a star. So, all in all, for my lowest rating so far on this list, granted we've only done four, but I this is an 8 out of 10. Or a 4 out of, wait. Wait, let me think here. Let me think here. Uh, do, uh, yeah, an 8 out of 10, so that would be, um, 3, would be a 3, I think, normally? Three. Yeah, it would be a three in your cases. Yeah, it's a pretty... It's, it is kind of weak. I'm willing to admit that, that, but I will say this. I at least enjoy Thunderball. Because it's a classic. It has... It's a Sean Connery Bond film. And I like... I generally like all the Sean Connery Bond films. All of them are very good. So... Just because I give this a negative review doesn't mean I don't like Thunderball. I do like Thunderball. I, I at least enjoy watching it. It's not boring like some of the other Bond films that I'll be reviewing later. It's not boring. At least somewhat keeps me enter entertained. The plot's kind of all over the place, but at least the characters keep me entertained enough. And again, the song is great. So, I got nothing else to say. Um, this is Solomon Pleasant, and what are we reviewing next week? Or next time, I guess. We don't have a schedule, as you can tell. There is no schedule with this. What's next time? This could um th this could work. I think this could work. Let's try it. Let's see what the let's see what happens. All right. This is Solomon Pleasant. Signing off.